the first Democrat debate behind us. There were some great points made, as well as some illustrations about what is and is not true wisdom. We're going to use today's program to fine tune our discernment antennas. And I have one quick question. Who is the one person that you do not want to discuss politics with at a dinner party? I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Here's your host, Randall Terry. Hillary Clinton, Webb, Chafee, Bernie Sanders, that guy from Maryland. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. It was fun. It was actually fun to watch. Not anything as fun as the Republican Party, but it was fun to watch. And what I want to do today is use their debate to help us to begin to discern. We're desperate in America for wise men and women to lead us out of the chaos. But there is a crisis in our country. A lot of crises, but the one that I'm thinking of is the inability of the average American, please don't be mad at me, the average American, the inability of the average American to discern between wisdom and demonic wisdom, pure, good, true wisdom, and demonic wisdom or evil wisdom, or to discern between being articulate and well-dressed and funny and witty and being right and pure. Let me read to you uh, a little passage out of the book of James to kind of set the stage. Oh, 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 wait, I need to answer that question. All right, who's the one person you don't want to talk to at a dinner party about politics? You ready? Turning to the other camera for the drama. It's your surgeon. <laughs> it's your doctor. You do not want to talk about politics with your doctor or your surgeon. And the reason why is because he has spent most of his adult life studying and then practicing medicine. Okay? He doesn't follow politics the way a lot of people do. And there have been times when I have been so shocked, like draw jaw dropping. <laughs> I did not just hear that from a doctor. And, and, and the reason you don't want to hear him tell those things, because he's usually not right. I'm sorry, doctors, and I'm trying to be disrespectful, but he's usually not right. And then you're really nervous about him caring for you because <laughs> you think if he's really that off, then why do I trust him cutting me open? All right, it's a joke and it's partly true. All right, let me read to you from the book of James. Okay, listen to this because we need men and women of wisdom. And, and we saw on that stage Democrat contenders for the presidency. And my, my boy said to me, Daddy, how, well, who on this stage is good? And I, I said, they're all not good. But, but if, well, and so then I had to explain to them about good and holiness and righteousness and public policy. And I said, boys, you know how you would ask me on the Republican stage? You should see all of our kids just watching this debate like it's a football game. I mean, they're more into it than they are a football game. I'm so thankful. They're not going to be doctors, clearly. <laughs> so they would watch the Republicans and say, Daddy, who's really good on there? I'd say, well, some of them are better than others. And the reason is because the standard, all right, the, the measuring rod for good people in office, wise people in office, people who are promoting good policies, the standard is the law of God, Christian ethics. Okay, it's not Marxism, it's not socialism, it's not Mohammedism, all right? It's not hedonism, it's Christianity, biblical principles, the laws of God, Christian ethics, whatever it is you want to call it. The a theocentric view of the world like our founders discussed in the Declaration of Independence. Okay? That's the f platform of this country, whether, whether left-wing wackos want to believe it or not, whether they want to accept it or not, or whether they admit it and say, yes, it was, and we've gotten away from it, and we are now a socialist country and a hedonistic, pleasure-seeking country. At least the, the, an enemy like that you can respect because they're honest. All right, anyway, let me read this to you, and then we'll, we've got to take a break. We need wisdom, right? Here's James chapter 3. 
Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good life, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. Now, let's stop. Who gets to define a good life? The ACLU? Planned Parenthood? Hillary Clinton? Donald Trump? Ted Cruz? No, no, no. A good life, the word good, has a fixed meaning. It doesn't change, right? It doesn't change. So let him by his good life. So first thing you have to do is be able to define good. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish, am selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. Don't be false to the truth. We saw a lot of bitterness, a lot of ambition, jealousy in both debates. This wisdom, the wisdom of bitter jealousy, okay, this wisdom is not such as comes down from above, from God, but is earthly or sensual. Some of the translations say sexual, unspiritual, devilish. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. Do you see this? There is a wisdom that Hillary Clinton has and Chafee has. As they, as they extolled LBGT, the lesbian, homosexual, bisexual, whatever it is, community, and, and same-gender marriage. And they extol the virtues of Planned Parenthood and child killing. I mean, they give them good names. They say, you know, they cloak the evil and the malice and the rot with clever phrases and smiles, good lighting. But it's still evil. It's still demonic. It's still literal. This is what the passage says. It is wisdom. It is wisdom that is demonic. I've got to take a break. When we come back, I'll finish this passage, and then we'll, we'll talk specifically about good and evil because we're, we, the Christian community in America, we are in a full-blown crisis, and it is the lack of discernment, the lack of discernment, the ability to judge what is demonic wisdom and what is pure wisdom that comes from above. Don't go away. Thanks to friends like you, we have state-of-the-art cameras and state-of-the-art teleprompters and state-of-the-art gear here in the studio. We have one big need, however. We have not yet been able to upgrade our computers. The computers that we use for a television broadcast or to create a documentary are not like the kind that you can just go buy at Best Buy. They are expensive because it takes so much horsepower to create TV series and or documentaries. So I'm asking you, if you want to see this show grow and you want to see us finish the What Would Muhammad Do series, help us get these computers. Three computers that we need right now are going to be just shy of $20,000. That's the kind of horsepower that we need. Go to the GoFundMe page you see right there. Watch the pilot for What Would Mohammed Do? And if you like the show, give us a gift. Welcome back. We are talking about the Democrat debate and wisdom, the desperate need that we have for wise leaders, but also the desperate need that we have to be able to discern between sinful, demonic, devilish, sensual wisdom, wisdom from below, dare I say wisdom from hell, <laughs> or wisdom from above. The devil displayed wisdom when he, when he seduced Eve and then Adam to eat the fruit, or Eve and then she seduced Adam to eat the fruit. There was wisdom there, okay? <clears throat> it was just earthly, unspiritual, and devilish wisdom. Are you saying, Randall, that their Democrat leaders have devilish wisdom? Well, of course I am. And many of the Republicans do too, because the standard doesn't change. Let's see about pure wisdom, good wisdom. It says, but the wisdom from above is first pure. Pure. Who gets to define pure? Not me, not you, all right? Purity, holiness, righteousness, those definitions come from above. 
the wisdom from above. The law of God comes from above. We don't get to vote on it. Let's all take a vote. Who thinks that was pure? No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. The standard comes from God. Wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason. Oh, I love that one. Full of mercy and good fruits. Some people say, well, if you people are in charge, you'll be like tyrants. You know? No, no. The wisdom from above is full of mercy because the wisdom from above knows that we human beings make mistakes, that we sin. Sometimes really bad sins, sometimes medium sins, but we sin. Sometimes little sins, but we sin. The wisdom from above is full of mercy, rich in mercy. It doesn't say, oh, it's not a sin. That's not a sin anymore. No, it says it's sin, but there's mercy. Full of mercy and good fruits. Oh, look at this one. Without uncertainty or insincerity. The wisdom from above is certain. Well, I don't know, should you be able to have your own gun to protect your family? Um, I don't know, uh, the uncertainty. Well, I don't know, should two people of the same gender be able to have nuptial vows? Well, uh, I don't know, I'm uncertain. No, the wisdom from above is without uncertainty. Not double-minded. Doesn't play both sides of the fence, okay? And it's without insincerity. There's so much insincerity today. It's almost embarrassing to watch some of these debates on both sides, to hear John Boehner speak. Sometimes, Hillary, I, I, I just, I want to be sick because it's just a script designed to seduce people. Whether it's Boehner trying to seduce us to believe in the Republican Party or Hillary trying to seduce us to believe that we need bigger government, it's still insincere. It's just used to seduce people so that they can have power. Without and the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The harvest of righteousness. So, in, in our next segment, I'm going to play some clips from the recent Democrat debate. And if you didn't see it, I want to encourage you. Go online or go to, if you've got an on-demand system with your television. Watch it. Watch the whole debate. All right? I, need, I know that you're going to, my, my wife, my wife couldn't watch the whole thing. She said, can I please be exempt? I will be violently sick. <laughs> she said, if I hear them talk, I get sick to my stomach. Because she sees and hears the insincerity and understands the twisted logic and the lies, okay? We will talk, we will show some clips from it when we come back. But, but part of what I'm trying to do here, friends, is to teach you to be able to hear and to see when you are being played, when you are becoming the victim of wisdom that is from below, that is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish, so that you don't fall prey to that wisdom of darkness. Christians must be involved in government, period. If Christians weren't involved in government, we would not have a United States of America. And there have been brilliant Christian minds over the centuries, such as John Locke, who is called the philosopher of American liberty. He was quoted by Clarence Thomas in his recent dissent on the homosexual marriage decision. If we don't understand John Locke, we don't understand the founding of America. I want to send you this book and my book, The Sword, subtitled The Blessing of Righteous Government and The Overthrow of Tyrants. I want to send you these two books for a gift of whatever you can afford. Pay the $8 shipping and handling, which does not cover our costs, and then give a gift of whatever size you want and we'll send you these books. If you cannot afford anything but the $8, can't even afford that, write us a note and we'll send them to you for free. I want you to have these books so that you can be better equipped to fight in the political arena. Come on, order them today. All right, let's play uh, a few clips from the Democrat debate. And again, there's, there's so much there. I ask you to take the time to go and watch it. But I want to play a few clips and, and make some points to help with the discernment process. 
Go ahead, uh, do the first one. I'm very proud that over my almost 30 years of public service, I have had no scandals. All right, so this is former Senator Chafee from Rhode Island, who was a Republican, switched to Democrat, said he's a rock when it comes to principle. He's never shifted on his principle, but he said the Republican Party left him, became too conservative. So he had to go to the Democratic Party. Now, he said something critical. I've had 30 years in office with no scandal. Now, this is clearly a shot at Hillary, all right? And Bill, for that matter. But th the Clintons have been <laughs> neck deep in scandal for decades. And now Hillary is dealing with the email scandal and an FBI investigation. So that was a shot across the bow at her. And it's, it's going to become an issue. I don't think that... I don't think that she's going to be the nominee, personally. She could be, they're very, cannot be underestimated, but I think that this nibbling at the ankles is just going to continue on. Sanders did great in the debate and Joe Biden is still waiting in the wings. All right, back to his statement. The scandal is in his endorsement of evil, all right? If you, if you look at the concept of scandalous behavior, it's not just an email server, okay? But the older use of the word to scandalize is, involves people who are committing evils, sins, grotesque, vile practices that are unethical. And then they scandalize people. They impact the souls of, of children, of men, of women. When you start to have an evil behavior that wears down the good conscience of good people, that's scandalous, okay? So this chafey man who says, I haven't had a scandal, what he means is, I haven't been caught breaking the law like Hillary has, or potentially has. But he's scandalous because of the unethical behaviors that he promotes. All right, let's play the next clip. Today in America, we have more people in jail than any other country on earth. African-American youth unemployment is 51%. Hispanic youth unemployment is 36%. It seems to me that instead of building more jails and providing more incarceration, maybe, just maybe, we should be putting money into education and jobs for our kids. All right. Again, making a good point. We do have more people in our country that are in jail than in any civilized country in the world. I've been to jail many times and I've seen exactly what he's talking about. Here's the problem. Here's where he lacks wisdom. He says, let's invest more in education and in jobs. He misses the whole point. The reason that our jails are filled with young African-American men and now they're filling with young Hispanic men, not to mention young white men, but there is a direct relationship with a fatherless home and a young boy who gets into crime. That's the first collation. And then the next is between a home that's on welfare and the mother, there's a, a mother raising a child without a dad present and she's on welfare, those young boys are more likely to get into crime and then more likely to get into prison. It is the welfare state which is a violation of so many of the commandments of God. It is the welfare state promoted by Sanders. The, the government is my daddy. The government is my savior. The government is my healer. It takes care of me from cradle to grave. It's going to it's gonna provide me education. It's going to provide me a job after school programs, basketball, blah, blah, blah. It's all a violation of the family and trying to make government our daddy and our provider. The very thing he's promoting is going to perpetuate what he doesn't want. Kids f filling our jails and not having jobs. Play the third clip, I know we're over, but I, I, I need to play it. But for me, this is about bringing our country together again. And I will do everything I can to heal the divides, the divides economically, because there's too much inequality, the di racial divides, the continuing discrimination against the LGBT community so that we will work together. And yes, finally, fathers will be able to say to their daughters, you too can grow up to be president. All right, here's Hillary. Um, 
almost laughable. She is she and her husband are, but especially her, she's one of the most divisive people in American political history, truly. And she's saying that she's going to bring people together. And, and, and whining about the lesbian, bisexual, transgender community. That's what that LBGT, whatever the thing is, forgive me. I can't, I can't even bring myself to memorize the four syllables because it's just shorthand for them to endorse a wicked, evil behavior. So they've already won at the Supreme Court. We've got people being put in jail and being sued because they don't want to participate in, an, in a homosexual marriage. And this divisive woman with a smile and a nice suit and a little sassy hair thing going on, is saying that we've got to fight against discrimination against them. Now it's Christians who are being discriminated against Hillary. It's Christians who are paying the price for their faith. And you're on the side of the oppressors, not on the side of people who want to bring unity. And by the way, one quick thing, then I'll take a break. Unity is not the goal. Listen to me, friend. If you're saying to your friends, we need to have people in Washington who can get along and get things done, then you're deluded. I don't mean to be unkind to you, but you've, you've eaten the, 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 the toxin. You've drank the Kool-Aid. The goal of government is not to get along. The goal of government is justice. The goal of government is not redistribution of wealth. The purpose of government is suppression of evil. Suppression of evil acts like murder, rape, theft. Okay? That's the purpose of government. And when you start thinking, well, we need unity, oh, well, that means is the Republicans need to stop re opposing things and need to get along with the Democrats so the Democrats can get their agenda of bigger government, more welfare, more socialism, more homosexual godlessness, more sex education for children, more Planned Parenthood, more distribution of birth control to our children, more mockery of God, more oppression of Christianity. I'll bring unity, says Hillary. And we can march in unity all the way to Hillary's... I don't want to say concentration camp because it's over the top. Friend, this TV show represents a mission. It's to be a voice of resistance to the evil in the land, but also to inspire people like you to take a stand at any level that you might be able to, to equip you, to inspire you, to challenge you, to give you the rhetorical ammunition that you need. But we still have to pay bills. This program, as you know, if you're a regular viewer, we don't spend a lot of time raising money. We don't spend a lot of time saying, oh, you need to buy this and we're gonna run it. No. We're, we're bringing you a message, but we still have bills that we need to pay. I'm asking you, if you have been blessed by this show, to please go to our website or send a check to the address you see on the screen or call the phone number that you see on the screen and use your credit card and to give 50 or 100 or $500 just to help us meet our normal expenses. And we'll keep bringing you this hard-hitting show. All right, we're just about out of time. We will, uh, on tomorrow's program, we will continue to talk about the Democrat debate. I, I want to play one more clip, and then we'll use this clip to set up tomorrow's program as well. All right, so go ahead. You don't consider yourself a capitalist, though. Do I consider myself part of the casino capitalist process by which so few have so much and so many have so little, by which Wall Street, greed and recklessness wreck this economy? No, I don't. I believe in a society where all people do well, not just a handful of billionaires. Right, so this was actually kind of cool because he was asked, are you a capitalist? And then he spun it to mean what he meant. And frankly, I thought his answer was awesome. And here's where some people who are ideologues, like me, I'm an ideologue, here's where some of us miss it. We don't give the devil his due and we don't call balls and strikes. The simple fact of the matter is that our current economic system in America, forget the words capitalism or social, forget all that, but our current tax structure and the way things are working is inherently unjust. And it's not because of so-called capitalism or freedom. It's because of greed and because of 
billionaires and multimillionaires buying politicians and structuring the laws to protect them and to take advantage of people who don't have the kind of money and power and access that they do. So Bernie Sanders is getting some of it right, but his conclusions are wrong. We'll talk more about it tomorrow.